It was a marionette, I think. It had a big head, the face was made of wrinkly flesh-colored rubber, and the eyes were gigantic, bulging white orbs with red pupils. The hair was black, and some of the hard substance that didn't really make mesh with the rubbery head. The teeth were gigantic, the pure white capable of moving up and down. The body and limbs were wooden and painted and resembled cloves, but the paint was faded, so you could see the wood's natural brown color in some places. Each arm and leg were a different length, but the hands and feet were completely detailed and pretty well done. It was loud chattering sound whenever it moved. That puppet followed me. I don't mean it got up and chased me, I mean it kept showing up in my life. My earliest memory of it was from my birthday. I've, I obviously don't remember the full details on that day, but I do remember my parents singing happy birthday and that puppet, I don't even know what it was there for, I just remembered it scared me to death. I couldn't stop crying. I was able to talk and I asked my parents about it and they said things like nothing had happened on my first birthday, they must not have it, thought of lying it to make things easier for me. The next time I saw it, it was I was around free. I was exploring my room full with old stuff that my parents had stored away when I found a calendar and I don't remember of that year. It, there was a photo of each month, but the only one I was able to remember was October. That puppet for the image of it. I got scared of it and ran out of the room. I told my mom and tried to show her the calendar, but and she knew the puppet was real, but I couldn't find it. The room had been very messy and I ran out of it quickly. I knocked over piles of stuff. I guess the calendar got buried. I, when I was six, it happened again. This time it woke up, happened in the middle of the night. I woke up from a nightmare and I couldn't remember the details of. I was too scared to go back to sleep. So I went to the living room and turned on the TV. An old black and white show at night, came, at night came on and the ending was the commercial started. The puppet came on and it was dancing with loud music played. I screamed and started crying uncontrollably. But by the time my parents got downstairs, the puppet was gone. I didn't see that puppet again for a while and after that, I kept having nightmares about it. When I was 15, I decided not to try, and track, try to track it down, using my internet to find information about the calendar, the sort, the short, anything. No one ever heard of it, but one day I got an instant message from someone that I never talked before. Their screen was the same name mashed up with numbers and letters, but their avatar was the picture of the puppet. They emailed me and glad that they still, you still remember me, then immediately signed up. They never contacted me or came to online again. When I was 20, I was walking by a store that sold some old toys and dolls, and in front of the window I saw the puppet. I went inside and asked the clerk if they knew anything about the puppet's history when it was made, and there was from anything. He didn't. He said the puppet had been sold to a store a few years ago. He, I could have it for $6, but I wasn't sure what to do. It still scared me, but having proof that it really exists seemed like a good idea. I bought the puppet and took it home. For a while, I felt better and I viewed the puppet as a childhood fear. I overcame that as an adult and even started to believe in explanations that my parents had given me in the past appearance of it. I saw it somewhere else as a baby, imagined on the calendar I dreamed on TV short or in someone who had been played an online trick on me. I kept the puppet and moved on with my life. I pretty much forgot about it. I went to college, got married, and my wife would be giving birth in a few weeks. I was cleaning up my room for when the baby comes and found the puppet dusty and abandoned. I didn't want my kid seeing this, this when he was little, I, so I picked it up and decided I might as well wipe the dust off of it and move it to another place. When I dusted it, I noticed a fade in description on the back. This is what he'll look like. Before I could figure out what this meant, I heard my wife start to cry. I, I rushed to her, and she looked more upset than I'd seen her. Sobbing, she told me everything that the doctor just called, and there was a problem with the baby. And that, my little pretties, was The Puppet, a creepypasta written by Kai Simpson. Uh, my final thoughts on the story? I'm gonna have to say, this one was actually a pretty well-made creepypasta. I'm... Not gonna lie, this is actually one of my favorite Kai Simpsons, um, well, creepypastas. I know this is an old creepypasta, I think it was made back in 2020, 20, um, I guess you could say 2012 or 2013 around that corner. And this story was actually pretty well done, I'm not gonna lie, this was actually a really well-made story. So what did I exactly like about this story? Well, 
For one, that it's a really, you know, interesting creepypasta. You know, about the puppet, you know, appearing, you know, in this person's life. And, you know, he becomes scared of it as a kid, but then moves on with it as an adult. And, you know, it followed me, you know, at certain, the person, the protagonist in certain places where he didn't know in that. And, you know, this is actually pretty crazy to come to think of it. Like, not in a bad way. I'm just saying crazy in a good way. Because I could definitely say... It's pretty freaky, come to think of it. You know, imagine, you know, you have a puppet and then you go do your own thing. And then all of a sudden the puppet, you know, follows you around. That's kind of creepy, to be honest. I know maybe this could be a possibility, but I think the puppet, it's probably paranormal stuff that caused a puppet, you know, to appear in this person's life in certain parts. So there is a big chance that it could be, you know, possessed per se. I know that's just a fury, but that's just kind of what I have thought of it. So I'm sure maybe it's just paranormal or maybe it's just the puppet is possessed, which most of you guys probably would think that that's poss a possibility because, well, based on this, it's kind of, you know, paranormal stuff. So I definitely have to say the puppet is possessed. So that is definitely um something I'm saying right now. So with that being the case, I'm going to sit there and, you know, say this. That this story actually went out well. It was really amazing, really well done. There was definitely lots of time and effort into the story. And I'm going to mention this now. The grammar is really good. And that I'm definitely going to say. The grammar of the story is really good. It's really well made. There was definitely a lot of time and effort into the story. And, you know, this story actually... Oh, boy. I I've actually seen a few narrations of this story. Like, I've seen a few people sitting there and, you know, narrating this story. And, you know, I'm surprised Shadow has not sat there and narrated this story yet. And I really hope he does narrate it soon because, oh my goodness, it's a really good story. And I really think Shadow would really like this story. The Shadow Reader. When I mean by Shadow, I mean Shadow Reader. So, or myself, even though my name is the Queen of Lions now, but I don't really care about it. But I'm just going to sit here and say this, that I really do like that the, um... Puppet Creepypasta was actually, you know, ends with, you know, the wife, you know, of this person's, you know, the protagonist's wife, you know, becoming pregnant. And, yeah, then ends with something bad happened. There's something wrong with the baby. Like, this is actually pretty interesting when you come to think of it. So, I'm definitely going to sit there and say, you know, I actually found, like, a few um, narrations of the story on, you know, on, you know, YouTube. I actually found, um... A few narrations of it, and I definitely gotta say, it's actually a pretty, um, it's a pretty believable story, to be completely honest. It's a very believable story, and I definitely have to say, this is definitely something. So, there is no doubt that I would, you know, sit there, there's no doubt that this story, you know, would be, you know, the whole thing. So, I could definitely say that the babe, that the story actually did pretty well done with this, and I definitely have to say... The grammar of this story is beautifully well done and just amazing. It's really well done, to be completely honest. So I could definitely say right now, it's really cool. So with that being said, I'm going to sit there and say right now that this story, I actually found it to be rather good. And I, if you guys are going to ask, what, is there anything negative about this story? Well, technically no. So that's definitely something. I'm, I don't have any negatives to say about this story. I actually found this story to be rather well done and made. So, with that being the case, um, yeah. I'm gonna sit there and say this right now, that this is simply my own personal opinion on this story. And if you happen to disagree with me, that's fine too. We're all entitled to our own opinions in regards to these, um, creepypastas. And this is just simply my own personal thoughts. Now, my final rate of this story is a 10 out of 10. It was really well made, really well detailed, the grammar was good, and oh my goodness, it's just... A really good story. I really definitely have to say. There's definitely a lot of great concept with the story. So that's definitely the reason why I actually love this story. So with that being the case, what did you guys think about this creepypasta? Did you all enjoy it? Did you not? Also, what do you have done person to help make this story a lot better? Leave me now what your thoughts are down in the comments section down below. I'm the Queen of Lions. Thank you so much for watching today's episode. And if you happen to be brand new here on this channel... Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe because I make brand new videos every single day. Also, don't forget to ring the notification bell to when I upload so then you guys will not miss an upload. And as always, with that being said, um, please roll the outro because I'm out of here. And I'll be catching you all in the next video. So peace out, everyone. And as always, roll the outro because I'm out.